Hello everyone and welcome back to Steven Plays Magic The Gathering Duels of the Planeswalkers. My name is Steven George, I play video games, today it's magic, today is the last episode. We are on the final battle, we are on uh, Tezzeret for the second time, and I decided that I would still use the Claws of Vengeance deck, and here's why. He's using black and blue, I'm using the other three colors, it's a perfect mashup of every single color in magic, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Let's jump into it, hopefully the Ajani deck is going to completely cream Tezzeret. But I guess we'll see. Alright, I get to play first. Oh man, I have one of every color. Nice way to start. I also have a Rip Clan uh, Crasher, which is a haste guy. That's nice. I have Pacifism and Naturalize. And Blaze! Oh my god. Yeah, I'll keep. So we're going to go ahead and start out with a... Uh, we'll go ahead and start with a Forest. Go over to his turn. He's playing an Island. And my turn. Alright, so we're going to play the uh, mountain so we can go ahead and get our haste guy out and swing for two. Swinging for two, right out the gate. I say that a lot. <laughs> right out the gate, man. We're coming out. We'll check him out. We'll do the two two haste. Just let you in the head, man. Just take you out, dog. Homie, you're gonna lose the game. What you playing? All right, it's the Tide Hollow Strix. Back for more. Two one flying death touch. We took care of him in an earlier episode using Siobhan Dragon. Actually, we took care of him using um, Shock, but same thing. Let's go ahead and get the planes out. Um, we have a few things we could do. We could get the Tundra Wolves out. Um, we can uh, good zap the bird for one if we really wanted to we could pacify the bird uh, I'm going to get the creature out I think it's the most important thing because they have summoning sickness so they take a turn to to heat up and um, let's uh, I think I'll pass turn I'm trying to think fiery because I'm always like yeah I gotta attack gotta attack gotta attack but honestly I don't know as anxious as I am to do two damage, he... I don't know. I don't know if he'll block me. I don't think he will. Let's see if he blocks me. Some of you are saying, you're crazy. What if he blocks you? Yeah, he might. But he didn't. All right. And uh, I will pass turn to him. All right, Tezzeret. You only have 16 health, man. You've already lost... Uh, what is that, a fifth? A fifth of your health? I guess I'm about to lose a tenth. No blockers. 16 to 18, what you gonna cast? Ethereum Sculptor. A 1-2 artifact creature. Artifact spells you cast cost one less to cast. That sucks. That means all of his stuff is gonna be cheaper to cast so he can get it out sooner. And uh, he also has Glaze Fiend, which is a flying illusion creature. Whenever another artifact enters the battlefield under your control, Glaze Fiend gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Dang. Dang. Um, before his turn ends, I think I am going to naturalize this guy. This card is the one that allows uh, spells to cost one less, so I am going to get rid of that. That way, thing it does not speed him up a turn. It's going to be useful uh, early game like this. So let's get another forest out. We uh, have pacifism available to us. Uh, not a bad idea. In fact, I think I will pacify this guy. Have fun with that. And uh, now we'll move to the attack phase. And we will swing for the fences. Well, maybe for like first base. We only have three. Even so, every little bit helps. It's going to go down to 13 putting us even further into the lead. I still have Blaze. He's probably not very happy with me right now. He's still going to attack, though. He's confident. He feels good. I have no blockers. What you got? Another Ethereum Sculptor, you son of a gun. See, the thing is, even if I use Pacifism on this, he still has an ability. 
And the pacifism only says your creature can't attack or block. So he's still going to be able to cast him less. So I got rid of one. But it's good that they didn't stack. Because uh, if he would have had two, then it would have cost two less to cast. And that would have sucked. So I still don't regret my decision. And now he's casting Howling Mine, which allows me and him both to, uh, to draw cards. We get to draw an extra card at the beginning of our turn. So I got a Mountain and a Venerable Monk. And I'm really thinking about blazing his stupid artifact guy, but uh, I don't know if I can bring myself to do it. It's a 1-2 otherwise, so it's not a huge threat. I could pacify it, but I mean, in this particular scenario, it feels like it would be better to just straight up um, kill it. Although if I hold on to blaze for a while, I might be happy I did, because then I'll be able to actually do direct damage to him. So... I'll bring out the monk instead. Alright, plus one monk. Uh, move into the attack phase. And uh, I will go ahead and swing with my 2-2. Because two, two, uh, he's not going to block me. He'll lose it. No blockers. So he's down to 11. The further down I can knock him, the better. And we'll go ahead and pass turn. So he gets to draw two cards. I'm sure he's happy about that. Terror. He's killing off my 2-2. Two -two. Fun times. So I'm down a 2-2. Two -two. Not, not too bad. Not too bad. He's attacking in the air for two again. Once again, not real frightened of him. Okay. And he's playing... Another Howling Mine. At the end of his turn... Sign me up, son! I get to draw a lot of cards. Three cards. Heck yeah. I'm okay with this. I, I like drawing cards too. I'm going to put down that forest. And uh, I'm going to go get a planes. There we go. Uh, next turn, if I haven't already like knocked him down pretty far, I'm going to be able to, um, to blaze him. Uh, let's do... I'm just I'm kind of trying to feel this out. I think I'm going to attack him with my monk. So let's attack him with the monk, see what he does. You going to do anything? Huh? You going to do anything? No blockers. Okay. He's at, he's at nine. At the end of his turn, if he hasn't done life gain or have any way to gain life, I'm going to incinerate him. On my turn, I'll be able to blaze him to victory. That's the plan. Ready? Go. So he's going to play an island. He's going to terror my monk, which I do. I that, that, that doesn't matter to me. Um, and he's going to play Fountain of Youth, tap two, and the artifact to gain a life. Crap. So he's going to have a little more life than I originally thought. Unless he uses his mana for something else, which is possible going to attack me for two. Excellent. Although it really at this point doesn't matter. He's going to gain two life. Oh, gain a life. Okay. So not two life. That's good. Main phase. Before your main phase ends, let's figure this out. How much land do I have available to me? Seven? Uh, so I can do six damage. Six and three. Oh, that's close, man. That is close. That is, um... That's really freaking close. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna I'm still gonna incinerate him, but I need to draw a land. If I can draw a land this turn, I win the game. And I drew two. <laughs> okay. See now I can cast Blaze. And if I cast Blaze, uh, how much land do I have available to me? I have eight. So it's gonna cost one in X, which is seven. Let's do Blaze. Tap all of my lands. Players. Seven damage. That's it! That is it! That is the power of burn! That is the power of burn right there, man. Blaze took you out, Tezzeret. Oh, man. You know, red cards killed him last time because I flew up, flew over him and hit him with a freaking crazy dragon. And uh, this time, I killed him with burn. So red is uh, the ultimate winner here. <laughs> um, your opponents will be tougher and wield more powerful cards. Okay.
Cool. So we have completed the campaign. We beat Magic the Gathering, Duels of the Planeswalkers, at least the single-player campaign. There is a, a co-op campaign. You can actually play, like, Two-Headed Giant with everyone. We also got a new card for the deck, and we unlocked uh, the Scales of Fury deck, which was the one that uh, Sarkin was using. So, excellent. I am definitely a, a fan of, uh, of beating the game. So, if you enjoyed this episode, uh, be sure to click like. If you haven't done so already, consider subscribing to uh, Stephen Play's new video game episode every single day. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching the Magic the Gathering Duels of the Planeswalker LP. It has been a blast. Some of you are wondering, are you going to do 2012? Are you going to do the 2012 version? Um, basically, I've just been uh, looking at what the response was going to be for this LP, see what's been going on, and honestly, there's a high probability. I'm not going to be doing it anytime soon because I don't want to do two LPs that are identical back to back. But um, probably maybe later this year, maybe early uh, 2013, I would definitely be willing to do it. Absolutely. Magic is a lot of fun. And I hope that for the people watching that had uh, either never seen Magic, never learned how to play Magic, I hope that you um, are interested. Magic is a lot of fun. Uh, this game is available for um, multiple systems, uh, multiple con uh, uh, it's also available on Steam, uh, so pick it up. You can pick up the 2012 version, you can play with your friends, uh, you can play with me. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun, and if you're interested in playing Magic the Gathering, the actual physical cards, I, I wholeheartedly endorse it. It's a great way to, uh, to go out on Friday evenings, have some fun, uh, be social, meet people. Um, increase your brain power, your your logic skills, your intellect. I guess you could argue all that if you want. Um, but most of all, it's fun. It's it's a lot of fun. Uh, be forewarned that magic can be very expensive. That's the uh, the only real downside. That's why it's really good to um, to get into magic with these games because they're relatively inexpensive. They're very cheap, and you can play and have fun. And then when you're ready to take the next step, you can actually. Uh, go to your local store. You can go to Walmart or uh, wherever you go to shop, Target, and um, you can buy uh, intro packs, which is like the starter packs for Magic. You can buy booster packs and expand your collection. Uh, then you can go to a local place and play for Friday Night Magic, and you can find out where a local place is because there's probably one in your town. Uh, you can go to wizards.com and find out where you can play. So anyway, uh, I, I really, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this LP. Um, I really enjoy doing it. I love magic, and uh, like I said, my biggest hope here is that the people, not only the people that have played magic and like magic, enjoyed this LP, but also that the people that are not real familiar with it watched it, liked it, and now they have an interest in magic. So, anyway, um, I'm done talking. I'm actually losing my voice because I, ha I have to talk so much during these LPs. But uh, I do thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, stay tuned for the next exciting LP. And uh, hopefully in the future, hopefully not too far future, we'll get the 2012 version as well. So thank you guys once again so much. You are an awesome audience, and I appreciate all your comments. I do read them all. And uh, let's meet back next time.